What is going on everybody, it's Steven here and welcome back to another Chinese smartphone review. Now today we're going to have a look at the Duji DG280 from DX.com, the link is down below in the description. Alright, so two weeks ago a lot of people have asked me what's the cheapest China phone you can get. And I just told them, there is absolutely no limit, so you can get Chinese smartphones for 20 or 30 dollars. But seriously, when you see something, hands off. Because either you will get faked hardware, so they tell you it's a quad core or octa core, and in reality you get a crappy dual core which just looks like a quad core. And also if you buy a dual core and you think two cores are fast, no, absolutely not. It's the MTK6572 chipset in the most cases, and this chipset is just a piece of crap. So mostly GPS not working, Wi-Fi problems, and a lot of other problems, and sometimes some crappy file system which is UBIFS. But yeah, um, I don't want to go into the details, and I just want to tell you, um, seriously guys, please buy a MTK6582 or above. So with a dual core you won't be happy, and also the quad core is just lower end, so don't expect too much from it. But today I want to show you what's the cheapest and quite usable smartphone from China, and it's currently the Duji DG280, because two weeks ago I got it below $80 from DX.com, and yeah, today we will find out if it's crap or just nice for the money. So let's just go and let's have a look at the smartphone. Now first of all, let me tell you the specs of the phone. So it comes with a 4.5 inch FW VGA screen with a resolution of 854 times 480 pixels. It should be an IPS screen with nice colors and viewing angles. The chipset is a MTK6582. This comes with a quad-core processor clocked at 1.3 GHz. It comes with Android KitKat straight out of the box, but yeah, there will be no Lollipop update. The frequencies are WCDMA, so 3G quad-band and GSM quad-band, which is quite nice, but no 4G LTE. It comes with 1GB of RAM, which is very common for the MTK6582, 8GB of ROM, but you can extend the internal memory with microSD cards up to 32GB. It comes with a 5 megapixel rear camera and a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera, but I can tell you the camera quality is not really good, but you will see it later anyway. So let's just get started and let's see what we can find inside of the box. Alright, now first of all let me show you what you can find inside of the box. So this is a very cheap smartphone, so keep in mind that there will be not that much included. Then here we can see a quick guide, so this is made by Duji, and just to mention Duji is a brand with a pretty good reputation in China because um, the phones have actually pretty good quality. Then here you can see a micro USB cable to connect it to the computer or to connect it to the charger. Absolutely nothing special. Then let's have a look at the charger which looks a bit cheap and also feels a bit cheap. So it's very lightweight, the build quality is not that good at all. Standard 5W charger and yeah, comes with some gaps as you can see right over here. So not the best build quality and I would definitely recommend to get some decent charging accessories from Amazon because from Amazon or something you can get them for something like $15. Then also a headset is included and this is pretty good because on some high quality China phones there is no headset included but here on this cheap one there is one fully working headset with microphone included as you can see. Also here you can see the speakers but yeah, the sound quality not the best and they are very lightweight, everything made out of plastic but at least it's working and the sound quality is okay but not the best. Alright, so that's it, there is already a screen protector on the smartphone, but no screen protector included. And I would say now, let's have a look at the smartphone. Alright guys, so here it is, the DG280, and first of all, I don't really like the design. So to me it looks like a toy phone for a kid or something. But yeah, um, I did read on the forums that they um, had something like a poll, a vote, so you could um, vote for the design, and it's a community design, but whatever. The display looks quite okay, so here you can see um, IPS definitely, because colors are good and viewing angles are also good. If you have a look here at the top, we have here front facing camera, the speaker and a light and proximity sensor. The proximity sensor was not working for me, so at least it's not calibrated, or yeah, it's just broken, I don't have a clue right now. The back cover here looks a bit too bright, so it's actually more blue, as you will see later inside. And you can see the back cover is made out of rubber with some strange pattern to absorb heat or shocks. And here we can see the back camera, the LED flash, which is actually quite bright. Here a 3.5mm headphone jack, the power button, which is also made out of rubber and doesn't feel that good at all. Here the volume rockers, they are integrated in the back cover, so they are also rubber. And here at the bottom the speaker grid and also the micro USB port and the bottom microphone for calls. Now, all in all, the back cover is the only thing I don't like, because yeah, it's some rubber thing and it feels pretty cheap in my opinion. 
But yeah, let's just go inside and let's see what this phone has got under the hood. Now there we go guys, let's just remove the back cover and yeah, you can remove it from every side, it actually doesn't matter and it comes off very easily. And here you can see how it looks without the back cover. And let's just have a quick look at the back cover because it's very flexible as you can see. And yeah, it bends a lot so you can even wrap it, you can do everything with the back cover, it won't break. And here you can see the buttons are integrated in the back cover and they don't feel that good to press because yeah, they are just rubber buttons. But all in all, um, it absorbs shocks pretty good. I've dropped it several times and nothing happened. And let's have a look at this. So here we can see the back camera, so the rear camera and the LED flash. The dual SIM slot because at the top you have a big SIM card slot and at the bottom, as you can see, there is my micro SIM card. Then here on the right side, we have the micro SD card slot up to 32 gigs. And here we can see the battery. And the battery looks quite okay. You can get a replacement battery for something like $6. So this is very cheap. And you can see it's a very thin battery. And the weight is okay. So I definitely think it really has 1,800 milliamp hours. And I could come through about one day. Not really much more. So 1,800 milliamp hours are not that much. But also this phone doesn't take that much power. Then here on the sticker under the battery, you can see the frequencies of the smartphone once again. So when you buy a smartphone from China, make sure that it supports the frequencies which your provider is using. All right, two IMEI numbers because it's dual SIM, dual standby. Let's reinsert the battery and the back cover is actually quite nice. Um, for instance, if you give it to your child or something, because if they drop it several times, it's very durable. So I guess nothing will happen. Okay guys, so now let's turn it on and let's see how it performs. Oh yeah, so we're now here in Android on the smartphone. So here you can see the home screen and yeah, the launcher feels pretty smooth. So swiping through the pages is okay, even though there's sometimes a small amount of lag, but you can install a different launcher to make it more smooth and also more responsive. Then let's go here to settings and let's go to about the phone to see on which Android version it is running. And they said it will come with KitKat and here we can see Android version 4.4.2 KitKat. This is definitely KitKat, but I cannot guarantee you that there will be Lollipop. And I guess on so cheap smartphones, there won't be Lollipop. So on the 64-bit generation, yes, but not on this one. But wireless update here is working because I already got a wireless update. Then let's have a look here at wireless and networks. So here you can see Wi-Fi, SIM management. So SIM management, because it's in dual SIM phone to adjust the SIM cards, Wi-Fi is working good. But yeah, with my Galaxy Note 4, for instance, I get here 150 Mbits. So that high speeds are not possible with the smartphone, but yeah, the signal strength is actually good. Then let's go back here. So that was Wi-Fi. It is working. Also Bluetooth is working and this phone supports a visitor mode. So basically that's something like a guest account. So totally useless in my opinion, because you don't share a smartphone like this one. Then let's have a look at guest and motion. So here you can see, um, for instance, flip to mute or double tap to lock and wake up which is very nice, which I use very often. And let's have a look here at storage. And this is not really good. So the main partition only 1.44 gigs. And the other partition here, so phone storage is about five gigs. And you just have about a four to maybe five gigabytes of usable space. So really not much space. You definitely need a SD card. And here you can see the battery stats and yeah, um, it's quite accurate. Haven't used it a lot, but one day is definitely possible. Here we can see running apps in the background. And I really have to say, even though it just comes with one gigabyte of RAM, it feels quite smooth because um, they have optimized the ROM pretty well. So sometimes it just takes about 30% of the whole RAM and this is really good. Just the slow scrolling speed here is pissing me really off. So yeah, the ROM is pretty clean. No Chinese bloatware or spyware on the smartphone. Then here we have locations so or GPS is supported, um, security, language and input. So you can set it to every language which is natively supported by Android. Here we have intelligent wake up. So basically that are wake up gestures like for instance, um, you can draw some um, letters on the home or oh, sorry, on the lock screen and then it just starts some application like the camera or something. Then here we have intelligent Soma whatever and I'm not sure what this is doing but we'll find out a bit later because um, it said something like swipe here with gestures on the home screen, but this is not working because for me, um, the proximity sensor was not working. Either it's miscalibrated or it's just not working. I have no clue, but we'll see it later in the Android sensor box. Then here you can see the Android status bar. So let's just check this out quickly. So here the notifications and here the quick toggles like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, data connection. 
So all the default stuff, and this phone also supports cast screen, which I haven't used right now. All right, so basically that's it. And I would say, let's just go through the default applications like the dialer application. So you see I'm connected to my provider. You will maybe get the roaming warning. This can be disabled in the SIM settings. So check this out. Then here you can hear the speaker quality and let's set it to maximum. I'm um, sorry, someone picked up the call and it's some molested child hotline or whatever. But yeah, um, the speaker quality, in my opinion, is very bad. So it's not very loud and also the overall speaker quality is not really good. But yeah, also the sensors were not working here. So you had to double tap and it's really strange. But let's have a look at the sensors later. Then here you can see um, the keyboard and by default Go keyboard is pre-installed. So you can also use that swipe thing here, which I'm not using very often but it feels quite okay to type and it's just a two point capacitive touchscreen. I mean, it's okay for typing, but for applications which support multi-touch like five points, it's totally useless. Then let's have a look here at the browser and yeah, it feels quite smooth also browsing here. There is absolutely nothing to say about it and just the site is loading a bit slow because it's the Chinese website of Duji. So yeah, um, browsing the web feels pretty good because it's a quad core and not a crappy dual core 6572 device. So here you can see it, it feels quite okay. I'm now connected to Wi-Fi and we'll later do a 3G speed test too. All right, so that was the browser. You can see here zooming also works, but yeah, the two point touchscreen is not really accurate. So a five point touchscreen would be the minimum. But let's have a look here at the menu and here we can see some pre-installed applications and some applications which I have pre-installed. But yeah, the first thing we have right over here is the camera. So I would say let's go outside and let's have a quick look at the rear and front camera. All right, all right, outside in my garden, here's the rear camera of the Doji DG280. Let's check it out, guys. It doesn't look that good on the screen, but yeah, the screen is very small. So actually it looks quite sharp here. Just the um, focus is not too accurate and also the lighting adjustment, in my opinion, is sometimes not really correct. But yeah, let's just check this out. So here we have the shutter. It's quite fast, not laggy at all. As always, guys, samples will be down below in the description. So check it out on ChinaDevices.com. Here we have video recording mode. You will just see a um, test video in a couple of seconds. And you can see it's not laggy or shaky, so that looks quite okay, but the video quality won't look good. Then here I always get a, um, I don't know, some strange message. I think that's Turkish or something. Pretty strange. I don't know why. Then here you can see the front-facing camera very zoomed in. The resolution not good, blurry, but yeah, um, that's common on such cheap China phones. And it's very zoomed in and not wide-angle. Then here we have the options. Here we have exposure, color effects, and all that stuff. So let's go quickly here to the camera settings. Then here we have voice capture and face detection. I mean, it's working quite okay. But if you have a look at the picture size, then this is totally fucked up. So here we have one megapixel for the rear camera. And yeah, it's definitely more than one megapixel, so something like five or interpolated eight. But um, it also doesn't change if you go to full screen or four to three. So somehow the megapixel um, adjustment here is fucked up. Then here we have the video settings, so electronic image stabilization, microphone mode, and the video quality is now set to fine, and now you will see some test videos, so just sit down and enjoy. Okay guys, now here's a quick back camera test of the Doji DG280, and yeah, it looks quite okay on that small screen, but yeah, the screen is so small, so everything could look okay on that screen, so just check for yourself how it looks for you on the computer. We have a working tab autofocus, Electronic image stabilization is also online, and yeah, um, close-ups look quite okay on the smartphone. So also focusing here works. I have absolutely no clue how it looks on the computer. On the small screen, it looks quite okay, but I can definitely not tell you how it will look on the computer. So just check for yourself. Not laggy at all, at least here in preview mode. And I would say let's just go and let's test the front-facing camera. So here's a quick test with the front-facing camera on that smartphone. And yeah, the focus, so the tap autofocus is not working in front-facing camera mode, so it should focus automatically. Let's just check this out right over here. 
and yeah it looks quite blurry and also um, the lighting doesn't look good at all so you cannot expect much from a front facing camera on a smartphone which is as cheap as this one so yeah just check for yourself how the quality looks for you i guess it won't look really good but yeah this is common on those cheap china phones okay then let's go back and let's just have a look at some other things so that was the camera test in my opinion yeah not really good camera but yeah it's just 80 dollars so what do you expect guys let's just quickly check out the rest here so that was the camera application then here we have some other things pre-installed fm radio which works perfectly nice with the headset then some things to the sound quality over the 3.5 millimeter check so this is quite good i've tested it in my car and it sounds absolutely good so yeah we have your maps so gps supported and it comes with mobo shiny or something so this is some chinese application just uninstall it because this is an alternative play store and this phone also comes with the play store so there is no need for that mobo shiny crap then here we have some other things so google um, apps are pre-installed you don't have to play around with this then torch yeah as always and yeah some other things right over here voice search also working so that were the pre-installed apps and i would say let's go quickly outside and let's do a gps test now before we get in the car let's do a gps test with the gps test application and yeah usually gps on very cheap china phones is not good but let's see if it is working on the DG280. And here we can see the result. So it looks quite okay. Accuracy 10 feet, which is almost as good like on the Octocore devices. So GPS antenna layout doesn't seem to be bad. And yeah, this is just now here in the static position. So I would just um, say, let's go to the car and let's see if it also performs good in the car. And here accuracy 9 feet, so that looks quite good. So I'm really curious on how it works in my car. Now here's a quick GPS test on the Duji DG280 and yeah it works perfectly well on the smartphone as you can see I'm using Google navigation so this works kind of nice I didn't expect this because usually GPS on those cheap smartphones is not that good but here on that smartphone yeah it actually works perfectly nice so let's just take the corner and there we go and yeah I'm just using a different car today because I have to repair some things on my other car but yeah GPS also in this car working perfectly nice
So we're now here at the end of another review and here comes my conclusion about the DG280. Now it wouldn't be the perfect device for me because I absolutely don't like the design and also the camera doesn't look really good. But yeah, I'm just keep in mind it's $80 or less and this makes it a pretty good device for children. You know, um, children often drop the devices and then the screen cracks or whatever. And this smartphone is designed to withstand all this. So the flexible back cover protects it very good and I would definitely use it if I go skiing or something and I don't want to um, go skiing with my Galaxy Note 4 because um, if I fall once then maybe the screen is broken. And here this device is actually quite durable and it's very cheap so if it cracks then just $80 dollars down the shitter. Now in my opinion this device is pretty okay for children or Android beginners but for advanced users like me or other users, it's maybe too slow. So I definitely love my Galaxy Note 4 or my OnePlus One because they are so smooth. I can do multitasking and you will um, just lag out this device if you want to do heavy multitasking on the DG280. But yeah, just keep in mind only $80. You can find a link down below in the description if you're interested. And yeah guys, don't forget to check out ChinaDevices.com which brings you the latest news and tutorials about China phones. So thank you again so much for watching and I really hope I see you again in my next video. So have a nice day and bye bye.